welcome back to our morning call here at the BD Swiss, uh, Wednesday, 8th of uh, January 2020 already. And uh, in this case, well, yeah, the story is uh, going on what we have uh, expected uh, previously is uh, likely going to happen. Retaliation, of course, uh, here, uh, here from uh, from uh, Iran, and uh, that's not something which uh, which happens in the markets. A few things also alongside that one: uh, the crash of uh, of that uh, airplane, that Boeing airplane, which uh, also, of course, uh, here it uh, has lost height and uh, impacted the run after departure. Is uh, at least what, what the guys from Aviation Herald here uh, uh, keep uh, mentioning. It looks like if you look at the video here, it looks like a bit of a fireball here uh, coming down. So Obviously, something like a technical defect. Uh, that's at least also what the crew had reported uh, shortly after takeoff. So potentially not uh, involvement here from uh, from uh, in uh, when the, within the U.S. and uh, Iranian situation currently. But of course, it adds up here. It adds up to the confusion. Of course, as well, on the other hand here, and uh, there's an article regarding uh, the uh, Boeing uh, crash here from Bloomberg as well. Um, there has been uh, there has been um, a ban. Um, there has been a flight ban uh, just uh, just re recently before before uh, issued. A flight ban has been issued before that uh, over Iraq and Iran. And uh, obviously here that uh, came potentially first of all maybe too late or second to slow uh, adds really to the confusion as I've said here. It was not a seven a seven three seven uh, um, a Max jet, but uh, uh, we we have to see of course. Uh, what uh, what's happening in this situation and of course what uh, what the outcome the potential outcome if presented correctly of course is what uh, it's going uh, to bring us and then stepping forward a bit here yeah, there we got some information also uh, again bloomberg here against uh, or for the trading headlines here and this is caused uh, about the machine trading algorithms making currency trades uh, uh, interestingly enough so of course those uh, those ones are being uh, are being programmed in a way when certain keywords uh, when certain keywords are hitting the markets that then only the machines are uh, purchasing or selling a sort of uh, currencies here and in this case we had potentially been uh, seeing the same story so we've seen here with the with the headlines i've just marked here that uh, the markets first of all sold the japanese yen here there was an interview with one of the guys uh, familiar with the matter here who had in, been involved with uh, with that uh, the software as well depends on which banks of course or which hedge funds but potentially those are those are rather bigger banks who are who are, who are using who are using this uh, kind of uh, strategy so a dollar yen of course as um, the currency pair had gone down why that first of all us dollar well weakening makes potentially sense but of course the japanese yen uh, gaining some momentum uh, the japanese yen uh, gaining momentum first of all of course as well in a certain risk off movement market participants are selling their uh, they are they are they are risky assets they are purchasing something which can be uh, named as a risk off asset meaning as well japanese yen usually also swiss franc potentially also the us dollar among others uh, in a rush to safe haven and we can see the same story also uh, going on further i don't want to go uh, too much into detail say here but interestingly enough uh, the whipsaw story here the markets sold off and then of course uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the story went uh, the exact opposite on the keywords not seeking war uh, just a retaliation uh, situation here and uh, in this case the market really seemingly within a short time frame i think this is about uh, like the 15 minute chart only had uh, had kind of uh, went uh, had gone already uh, back to the upside we can see that here if we are looking at to into the into the trade here the market started really also on the hourly chart you can see that the market really started going lower and uh, right now seemingly is um, uh, uh, is coming to a halt just uh, below that resistance area. Uh, if we're looking at the longer term charts here, we can see as well, and that's uh, something potentially a bit dangerous for us here, that the market is showing us some sort of bullish mentality. Of course, now we have to see it's a daily market here, daily chart. We will see have uh, 14 hours until this candle is uh, going to be uh, going to be uh, presented um, as is in the charts. Uh, of course, we still have uh, the uh, the entire European trading session in front of us, and as well, of course, uh, later on throughout the day, uh, the US session. We as well know that uh, doing the uh, the story from uh, from Iran and um, and uh, US right now uh, in the afternoon, your time early afternoon. 
in the markets uh, I could potentially uh, be presented with certain uh, fresh news uh, from the US because as well uh, Donald Trump is going to present some some new ideas as he claimed so far regarding the situation and until then I think the markets it could be uh, could be uh, could could move into uh, into either uh, direction of course gold also being highly involved in this uh, move here uh, uh, the uh, big resistance level the big psychological level as well uh, had been uh, had been a uh, punched through a big hole as well 1608 if i'm not wrong was the max we have uh, we've seen today what is it on the high area here 1611 even 1611 so that pretty much a resistance candle where i said look this can be a certain resistance area we can see currently that uh, on the daily chart also the market is in pretty much overbought conditions but i was saying look guys we should look only for long entries, we should not look for any potential short entries. The markets are really uh, pretty much in a in a rushing mode right now. Investors are standing partly, I would assume, at least on the sidelines, orienting themselves first to, to get potential insights on uh, where to trade the markets, which side to be involved at. Uh, and uh, right now we can see clearly that just this uh, the small news here, and uh, of course the big effect as well, the attack, uh, the attack with the with the with the Iraq uh, or bases in Iraq by uh, the by the Iranians uh, uh, is just uh, is just causing here the markets to rush again towards uh, the safe haven mentality. So I would still prepare and uh, wait uh, wait for the markets to give us some potential, a bit of a pullback if we even would get one. That's the question, definitely. But um, the long trade definitely here is the only one which we would like to take because the markets are pretty much a seemingly going from, from left to right, from a bottom to a resistance area here in the, in the a political, uh, in the highly political atmosphere at the moment and environment at the moment, which is, uh, which is making it slightly difficult here. And uh, without willing to get burned, I think we should really be uh, trading this with caution and should really wait for further uh, information as well. So moving back to the uh, headlines as well, there, there was, uh, of course, uh, the, the question as well uh, from uh, Germany. What's going on in uh, terms of the economy? We can see here right now that uh, German numbers here, uh, Carsten Dreschke from, uh, from the ING has talked about it right now uh, in the, uh, in the quick, quick story there. Factory orders, seasonally adjusted factory orders are really going bonkers here. The markets are really uh, in a bad behavior. Of course, we know that the um, automotive industry is really uh, losing steam big time. First of all, of course, uh, uh, Greta Thunberg is doing uh, her story kind of to, uh, to push down, uh, to push down uh, from an uh, environmental uh, point of view, the markets itself. Then we have Dieselgate, uh, a Dieselgate scandal, which happened beforehand. So several things uh, coming together here. And uh, we could simply say as well that uh, this is really not happening uh, markets, uh, the situation uh, entirely. Where is it? Factory orders. There was a different... Um, Where's the other? I saw a different path here. That's not the one I saw different areas. And they are pretty much in decline. And of course, uh, in this case, we really have to see uh, how, how this helps the economy. Of course, if we are looking at the currency right now, we can see only that the euro is uh, really not gaining some sort of momentum. The resistance area is seemingly in play. And I would say as well, of course, uh, bigger news are coming uh, this afternoon from the US with the ADP employment change. And we might still see a bit of a push here towards the US dollar. And of course, the push of the US dollar here at the moment can't really be seen, but uh, looking away here from the weekly chart uh, point of view, we can still see the market has potentially Monday, Tuesday found its resistance area, found the highs for the week, and we could potentially see that uh, the short side of things here would be rather the one we like to trade. And hence, of course, as well, we could prepare each other here for potentially short movements here and where to enter. Potentially here later in the day, I'm looking to enter the market at at around the 111.30, 111.40 range here. So not far off from where we are at right now, but it's looking potentially a positive here for a stronger US dollar and then of course a weakening uh, euro. We're in the same boat as well in terms of the uh, New Zealand US dollar here. We are still in the short trade here. That market has gone uh, slightly against us, but uh, I'm not worried uh, much about it. Same story occurs as well, because I still believe as well that in this case here, where do we have it? Can I really move this trend line? No. Yep. Um, and we can see pretty much we are near the entry level. Yes, if we would look at it from a monthly point of view, this could potentially look uh, as a, a bullish market movement. The candle here, the recent candle had been pretty bullish, but uh, looking at it from a weekly point of view, I still see this major res resistance in play. And of course, this uh, a major resistance area 
could point to with what's a further weakening here as well. And I would still also be um, in the same footsteps as well, where I would call it a, a bit of a safe haven play as well. New Zealand dollar as a rather risky currency here uh, could uh, could uh, give way towards uh, towards the US dollar. In this case as well, of course, uh, the US dollar has pretty much uh, uh, pretty much uh, good shoes on in order to step away further and uh, uh, pushing the market lower. Trend lines also making sense. It's still uh, the same story. We can still still see as well. I mean, you could argue still as well that we had a pretty much long trend here. But to me, to argue about it here, the resistance play also might point us towards. Uh, towards uh, towards a, a further push to the downside and that's the trend line the shorter term trend line i would call it here and uh, if this one broke and lower we might see a further weakening in kiwi and strengthening in um, us dollar so that's uh, for the headlines here at the moment and then uh, as said adp employment change is not a big number of course uh, itself but uh, in conjunction together um, as a, a preliminary data for Friday for the uh, non-farm payrolls, we should take this one a bit serious and should potentially get uh, any sort of insight. So if this one uh, could beat the forecast as well, we might uh, we might get uh, some sort of positive or further positive reading on Friday when, on Friday when the NFP is going to pre be presented. But to sum up the news events here for the day, this is definitely the most uh, the most important story as a guiding a guidance here for us uh, towards uh, towards uh, the weekend. What else are we having? We're having, of course, um, our open uh, position uh, positions here right now. Uh, despite that, we are still short in this uh, dollar Japanese yen. Also, that one is uh, pretty much um, an interesting story because the markets currently are really back to this uh, boring mode, as I would call it. The market's starting to move, and then right. Right now, as we said, we moved lower here. We've talked about it right now uh, when assessing, of course, um, assessing the information here with the algorithm, the trading or with the automated computer based trading here. The markets went back to that resistance area and I would not really uh, give up this uh, this trade here. Of course, uh, as I said, uh, it's a long term play here of, uh, of, uh, of the charts for me. So weekly chart pointing towards weakening here and the Japanese yen in current or under current circumstances senses should seriously should should point uh, towards further strengthening of the JEPI. So dollar yen should really go lower here as well. And uh, of course, looking at the trend line, trend line broken lower, uh, potential war, uh, not maybe not from the Iranian side, but potentially rather from the uh, from the US side. I believe that the Americans would uh, not uh, give in as well. And they would say rather, uh, if there would be any further attacks on any US basis, which we had seen right now, there might be something happening bigger. And um, of course, the entire problem stands uh, on the uh, in this uh, in this entire situation, we have uh, we have the Middle East, we have the tensions, Libya, uh, we have Iraq, Iran, of course, as well. All that, um, all that, uh, all the entire region is just uh, uh, pretty much. Uh, uh, you can call it a, 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 yeah, a, a big, a big uh, boiling pot without uh, without uh, without any any valve where electricity or energy could leave right now. We'd see everything is like in a way building up, and I would believe as well that uh, currently as well this trade here for once, uh, and of course uh, the long movement here in gold, which had moved up right now. Is pretty much uh, an interesting story here for us to observe and of course on the other hand we can see also the us dollar we are slightly short in the us dollar or we should say of course on the other hand we are long the canadian dollar stop loss already uh, in play the market uh, uh, can't uh, can't really burn us here any further but this is also looking a, a bit negative so the dollar short only because the canadian dollar has pretty much room to the upside and this one of course in conjunction with oil we can see oil this morning has also spiked up potentially also i wouldn't be wondering as well if this was a was any sort of algo trade here involved a, a big shot up uh, on the attacks uh, from iran here and then the same story the market really immediately pushes back so we can see tight ranges of volatility, meaning as well, the market starts exploding into one direction and immediately comes back to the same, which means as well for us here as breakout traders, a bit of tough times here, but uh, still, of course, uh, it's a matter of time when the volatility really in the markets uh, explodes further, uh, grows higher, and then shows us that uh, with one of these trades here, of course, our portfolio would also really be up and running and growing further potential. So we'll wait uh, cautiously here what's going on. I'm not trading oil to the upside uh, directly, as I've said prior, but uh, still I believe that uh, 
the uh, dollar against the cat is pretty much uh, the way to go. This trade uh, uh, adjusted in terms of stop loss, nothing much can burn. News-wise, uh, what else can we expect? We have uh, limited news here so far for the for the for the day. We have uh, nothing major what we can see apart from the uh, ADP uh, employment change. But um, of course, we have uh, the information also later in the day from uh, Carlos Gosen, the guy who has fled, uh, of course, uh, Japan. The guy who had uh, run and uh, positively pushed uh, Nissan Motor Company company here uh, towards further gains uh, until uh, potentially also his personal losses had been uh, pulled over to the company and uh, he, uh, he had been prosecuted and uh, of course arrested. So we'll see uh, in the afternoon, I think 3 p.m. Uh, 3 p.m. Beirut time, he'll give uh, a press conference and uh, that won't be affecting markets big time. I don't think there will be a big, uh, uh, big movements in the markets, but potentially we can get uh, some further interesting insights in this entire situation and uh, towards his beliefs on uh, uh, how it makes sense for him to evade the, the Japanese, um, the Japanese, the Japanese uh, a country over there. But uh, of course, uh, the dramatic flight uh, to Lebanon uh, around the New Year holiday is, uh, not, uh, has not been forgotten. And uh, that's going to be something interesting as well here for us. Uh, to observe and uh, of course uh, fast and forward is most here we see the stock markets also giving way a bit we can see also our german dax trade is uh, uh, going back towards entry area that's helping us a fair bit uh, we don't see uh, anything much happening right now but of course uh, this uh, situation could further help us here the further uh, situation with Iran and uh, the US in this case could uh, push our trade, of course, further uh, back into positive territory. We'll see more, 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 uh, more positive pushes to the downside here. The gold shooting up, attacks from Iran, potential even a bigger fight back from the US as well. So one story hits the other end, of course, as well. This is also affecting really the US um, the stock markets. Pre, uh, pre-market open, of course, we can also see that the markets had, uh, had been pushed lower as well. Of course, uh, we're looking at daily chart here. This could be seen as a potentially bullish movement long term at least. But uh, for now, I think we should, uh, we should look at it uh, from another point of view. And this is potentially that markets are pretty much uh, vulnerable for any sort of negative news. And uh, they are coming at least. And uh, they had already pushed the uh, gold markets um, higher guys happy trading open trades should be clear i uh, see our portfolios working out let's hope that uh, the new zealand us dollar comes back into positive territory anyways that's a weekly trade so we have plenty of time of course uh, a further has not likely not been an attack on the uh, a boeing airplane there leaving iran airport but of course boeing our short stock market could also get a push and i'm i'm not really in a positive situation to say that i don't want to make a, a money trading other people's tra- 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 tragedies so uh, and not uh, of course uh, on any fatalities but uh, those trades had been taken in, um, in in hindsight beforehand and of course uh, as well those uh, very unfortunate circumstances are helping our portfolios here and i think we should just uh, stick to them and of course uh, be a uh, be a uh, be a uh, be contented if our trades at least uh, can move on anyways guys happy trading and uh, uh, still praying for world peace of course at least for the year 2020 guys happy day ahead take care bye bye